Okay, we'll go to part two. And I don't know if the light's going to hold up, but I'll go as long as I can. And uh, hopefully this will not fall down. Sorry, guys. Uh, hopefully that will do it. Um, okay, so I was I had stopped at people that were a little puppy dogs. People that were in heaven. Classical American Christian heavens. Now, uh, according, and my dad was a Church of Christ preacher, or still is, at the time of this this um, video. Um, according to Christianity, it is not easy to get into heaven. You have to be a pretty good person. And that thinking, that belief system, translates when people die. And so, there is a belief that there aren't a lot of people that go to heaven, um, even though, you know, children automatically go to heaven. But as an adult, uh, usually people on the inside in their, in their real thinking is, uh, oh, they're, they're pretty judgmental on themselves and others. So what happened in all of these heavens were that people did see on occasion they, they saw different things so there was almost always this this singing whether or not you could see the chorus of angels or whether you couldn't um, sometimes people would see a Jesus a form of Jesus uh, sometimes they would see Mary uh, Magdalene um, very very seldom there was this God on a throne way away far away but nobody ever uh, went and talked to the God uh, the heavens were beautiful, more beautiful than you could fathom. Uh, streets of gold and the whole shebang. Uh, people were always walking down the streets. I never saw anyone in a mansion. Uh, they seemed to be walking down the streets looking for their mansion. Because when you go to heaven, that's the gig, is you're supposed to have your own mansion. But they seemed to be looking for their mansion. And they would look around and... That was about it. Now, nobody ever talks about what, really what goes on in heaven. It's kind of assumed that uh, God and the angels are, are going to be handling the activity side of heaven. So there are no belief systems really uh, about what goes on in heaven once you're there. It's just uh, a great place that you can spend eternity. So that's what's translated is people are there waiting for um, activities to be provided for them but because at the heaven and hell and where you go whenever you die is a creation of each individual person uh, there is nothing but you what you take with you so with that belief system of somebody else is going to take care of what's going to go what's going to go on there uh, it kind of ends at that point and because it ends people are bored there's no one else around them, and with that, they quickly look elsewhere. So they look away from the flower, so to speak. And when they look around from the flower, so to speak, then they see what else is up there energetically. And, of course, the same thing happens as with did the heaven. They collapse and they move on, whether it's back to another form of earth or out of the game altogether or somewhere else within this game. Okay, so that was something that I was personally interested in. When you die, um, all indie ears have some similarities, I think, although I do not watch or read other indie ears' experience because I never wanted anybody to say, oh, you were just copying this indie ear or this indie ear. Um, I did that from the get-go. In the first place, I didn't know it was a big thing um, whenever I first had it happen. And I didn't think anybody would believe me back way back when. And when I started to like kind of, you know, I was dead and came back and people brought up the near death experience thing. Uh, certainly I knew it from a nursing standpoint that people had talked about uh, near death experience. And as a neuro nurse and an ER nurse, ICU nurse, I had had people that had died and come back. Um, they didn't talk really about their experiences to me. So I really didn't know much more than that as to whether or not. I certainly believed uh, that there was something on the other side. I never believed that there was nothing on the other side. Uh, the question became, for me, what was on the other side? And there was a lot of problems that I saw in Christianity 
uh, in my 20s and 30s that didn't make any sense to me, so I kind of uh, wrote off the whole Christian thing. Uh, so when I was over there, I wasn't, uh, when I was leaving and went over there, I wasn't afraid, and I really didn't have any particular ideas or belief systems in place uh, as to what was up there, and I think that was an advantage for me. Uh, because I wasn't afraid, there was no version of myself. The same way that you have the heaven and hell scenario, you can also have the, uh, the grandmother that comes and tells you you need to go back, the angel that t shows you a certain amount of knowledge and then says you need to go back. Uh, you don't need to do anything, and certainly no one is making you do anything, but you can have it set up so that you tell you to go back. Uh, I didn't have any of that uh, at all in place, so I think that was an advantage uh, for me. Oh, I'll just sit there. Thank you. Um, that was an advantage because I was tired of here and was not afraid of there. Uh, I didn't really have anybody that was going to stop me, so that left me quite open. All indie ears, I don't care who they are, if you've had a near-death experience, you agreed or created it for a certain purpose. And it is a continuation of this game. Nothing stops. You didn't stop when you died and started something else. It's like walking into another room. It's a continuation of a story. It is a mansion with infinite rooms that you just keep walking into from one room to the other. And each room is an exciting, complex uh, experience. Um, as a part of the all that is, we are creator gods, and that is what we do. You are here to create experience, create experience. That is what you have forever done, and you will forever do. Uh, it is never bored, boring, never boring anywhere. It's not boring here. It's not boring on the other side. Frequently, though, what I've heard from near-death experience people is I can always tell from the story where they were whenever they died, as we could say how far out. And I am not saying in any way that the further out you go, the better that you are at all. It simply is a different perspective that different NDE people choose to go to and to have an experience before they come back. In my particular case, I went what would be equivalent to very far away from the flower. Then I, I turned around and I just, I remember thinking more, 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 and more. And the more I thought more, 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 the faster, so to speak, the information, the experiences came to me. And because I wasn't afraid, I just kept going. Now, the next thing I remember is I remember... Um, I'm not exactly sure when I talked to God and Satan, but definitely it was after I left the game and then came back into the game. Uh, so that was later, sometimes later, and we can talk about my conversation with those two sides later. I definitely had my uh, feet under me, so to speak, as to what was out there so I could come and talk to them um, easily. I also saw people dying and going to all other kinds of versions, too. Um, whatever you can think of, that there's a, a story about, um, I saw people die and go there. And from the perspective that I was at, I saw everybody who was dying. And I remember thinking, I can see all these people dying at once. I know exactly what they're thinking. I know exactly, uh, when it's going to end. Isn't that interesting? And I remember going, well... If I can see all of this at once, I know that the concept was uh, somewhere came in there of time. And I started going, well, if I can experience everything that's going on from all of these people that are dying in the moment, can I experience all deaths that have ever been on the planet? And I instantly did. Uh, and I saw the what used to be what you would consider in the past and how people died and where they went to compared to what it is now. And then I saw it in the future of how it's going to be in the future. And I remember thinking, wow, that is so interesting that I can see time like that, that time before and time after. So then I went, well, if I can see them, can I see something on the planet? So I went down in, on Earth 
in some arbitrary person and I experienced what they were doing in that moment. And I thought, well, can I see their past? Can I experience that? And I did instantly. And I said, well, can I experience their, fur, their future? And that is what I saw instantly was that multiple timeline thing and which one the, the, the entity that I was in, how they stepped into what timeline they were going to be in and how many timelines they were. And in seeing all the different timelines from each individual person, I saw a dramatic difference between some people that had far less timelines and some other people who had timelines for what you would consider in, in, infinite timelines. At that time, I didn't understand what the difference in these people were, but I saw a very definite difference in them. And then I thought, well, that's people. What about a molecule? And I went down into one, that person's a molecule in their little finger, I remember, in their fingernail. And I experienced what that molecule's perception of experience was from its beginning to its end and all of its timelines. So I went, whoa, that is so cool. And then I started this Zoomy thing of going into all different kinds of uh, people, places, or people, things, uh, anything that you can imagine. I decided to go down and have the experience of their perception. Then I went, well, that's interesting. And I pulled out and I said, can I do it on the earth? And I did. I did it at the beginning of the earth, all the options of timelines of the end of earth. And then I did, well, can I do it for the solar system, the universe? And I just, da, 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 da. And that's when I saw the whole game. And I saw the game. Every time I did this, I wanted to see the beginning and then the op, the end. And I began to really understand linear time space and how it worked. And I went all the way back to the beginning of this game and I collapsed the whole thing just like I had done the the person and then the planet and then the whole thing and that's how I figured out that this game based on light dark and duality where it came from the creator of the whole thing and was able to talk to that entity and that about then is when I stepped into now time and I took a deep breath and I went oh yeah I remember this is normal. Now time is the normal state of affairs. But when you're in now time, very quickly, like, who I mean really quickly, when I was in now time, I was looking back at linear time space thinking, uh, how did that linear time space thing work again? So when you are in now time, it's extremely hard to comprehend how linear time space works and when you're in linear time space it's very difficult to re remember how now time works it's a genius setup i mean the creator of this concept was absolutely of course we are creator gods we are all geniuses but yeah this is a really uh cool one um in that jumping around collapsing time space i was able to see a lot of perspectives and personally I am Aquarian number one I am Germanic the physical body is Germanic and um, the entity that I am outside of this game my big deal is seeing things from the big picture I'm an energy being I don't generally do physicality uh, physicality is slow sluggish and annoying to me uh, I don't do I don't play with time much. I'm mostly in now time. So linear time, space, and physicality is very difficult for me to use. I, I am not an expert at it at all. I have never said that I was. I am an expert at knowing how this whole thing was created, how all of this works together, and where you came from before the game. Even if you are a long-term human and you've been in the game for millions upon millions of lifetimes. I know where you were before in now time. Okay. So then I went to now time and started zooming around into other games. This whole thing is like if, if you took, you looked up at the stars and you think how big that is. You go on the internet and you see how far out it goes and all the galaxies and all the, the solar systems and all the stars that are involved. If you multiply that times 100 million, you might begin to be able to get close 
to how big this game is, the singular game. And this singular game, everything based on duality, is quite a small game compared to other games outside of this, this creation. So when I say this game, it is very, very big. All of the, what you hear people talk about in uh, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and above, there's a great deal of this game that's involved, including uh, the angels are in this game, um, that then they're in partial amnesia, Jehovah God is in this game, Satan is in this game, um, all of these entities are within this game. Um, I have yet to hear of any NDE person that has gone outside of this game. Uh, I have heard people step into outside the game, but usually they're so overwhelmed um, with that feeling because it is very different and it's very powerful and it's very overwhelming. Uh, the people that have stepped outside of the game usually have not looked around at all. They just kind of go <gasps> like that and experience that moment and everything that's around them, but they don't really go flying through. They don't really identify what's going on on the other side. And I have yet to meet or hear of anyone who has done that. Uh, makes it, uh, I, I don't know of anybody but me that has done that. Most indie ears don't go outside this game. Uh, for their own reasons, for their own experience. It does not make me better than anybody, guys. It just means that as far as I know, my experience has been very singular, which is odd. Uh, it's an odd feeling uh, to think that nobody else has, has just gone flying out of the whole game so that they can understand what I'm talking about. Okay? All right, so that is me revisiting it uh, again. Uh, and now I'm going to go into these different aspects, kind of more one at a time, and in a lot more detail. Uh, the different stages that I was in and what happened in all these stages. And I will attempt, again, to uh, do a better job of trying to explain what's outside of this game. What I really want to get through this time is the difference between this game and and outside this game. The people that I tend to talk to the more, most I call star seeds. I didn't know what else to call um, the entities that are not practiced within this game. I don't think star seed is a good name. Um, I think star seed was given to mean uh, people that were from like the Pleiades or, or whatever, different star system that had come here uh, from that star system either recently or, you know, like this life is their first one or within a couple of lives they had come from those areas and they related. Um, those other planets are in fourth dimension and uh, above uh, right now and that is not what I'm talking about. That is still within the game. I am talking to entities that have not been in this game at all, that have not been in this particular game of duality and linear time space. That seems to be the easiest way to explain this game is that combination of duality where the, all it is is split into two and then it is fractaled down in half and half and half again over and over again to the point of being extremely complex. If you look at this game outside of the game, outside of the human body, what you see is energy. And these experiences that are created by your um, perspective as a human god in, per, in amnesia, going through everything that you're going to leaves an energy trail, so to speak. Energy trail behind and in front of. And those energies are deeply complex. And it, this whole thing is incredibly beautiful from outside the game. It is something that is unlike anything that's ever been created before. And that is what draws entities to come and play this game, is to be a part of this intricate, energetic creation 
uh, that is absolutely amazing. It is also what draws entities on all levels to come and watch. Uh, Earth has been the first planet that has gone down into what you consider third dimension. The fact that a creator God can be in amnesia and go down that low in vibration, that slow and intense and hold that amnesia to create experience that creates more threads and uh, more complexity in that energetic creation has never been done before. Earth was the first one and it was uh, took a long time to figure out how to get creator gods in amnesia in the human body form to go down into that uh, deeply dense. And contrary to what other people think, it was not done a long time ago. It was done relatively recent for the planet Earth, and it was based on what you know around you as civilized mankind. And we can go into that on a different day. Okay, guys, I think that's generally what I wanted to say, and I will come back and go over these things um, more in depth. Um, and then hopefully that will lead to more videos and more videos, just like it did the first time, only with a bit more clarity and maybe a little bit more depth. Okay, guys, that's it for me. I'm losing light here. I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll see you later. Bye now.